While Queen Balgis was getting ready to arrange the royal gifts to be sent to Suleiman and choosing the people who would be the royal envoys bringing gifts, arrived in front of Prophet Suleiman the bird-watching Hut-Hut informed him of Balgis's plan to send envoys bringing gifts for him as an answer on his letter to him. After hearing the news brought by Hut-Hut, Prophet Suleiman arranged plans to receive Queen Balki's envoy and ordered his Jean troops to prepare and build a magnificent building that was incomparably dazzling, so that the eyes of Balki's envoys would dazzle when they arrived. When the messenger of Queen Balki's arrived, Suleiman received them warmly and after hearing their description of the purpose and purpose of their arrival with the royal gifts he brought, Prophet Suleiman said, Come back with these gifts to your queen. Tell him that Allah has gave me abundant sustenance and wealth and endowed me with gifts and favors that are not bestowed upon anyone from his creatures. In addition, I have been sent as his prophet and messenger and given a vast kingdom whose power does not only apply to humans but also includes kinds of jinn creatures and animals. So how can I be persuaded with treasures and gifts like this? I cannot be neglected from my prophetic preaching obligation by treasures and gold even though this is the whole earth. You have been dazzled by worldly objects and splendor, so you looked at the gifts you brought with you and thought that our eyes would be dazzled by your queen's gifts. Go back and tell him that we will send a very strong army that will not be defeated to the land of Saba and will bring out your queen and her followers from this country as the despicable people who lose their kingdom and greatness, if he does not immediately fulfill my demands and come surrender to me. Balki's delegation again reported to his queen what they experienced and what had been said by Prophet Suleiman. Balki's thought, the best way to save himself and his kingdom was to simply surrender to Suleiman's demands and come before him at his palace. What has been threatened by the delegation's entourage is not an empty threat. So he asked his Jean troops, which of them could bring the throne of Queen Balki's before the person came to surrender. Ifrit, the smartest jinn said, I can take the throne from Queen Balkiza's palace before you have time to stand up from your seat. I am your messenger who is strong and can be trusted. Another person who has knowledge and wisdom said, I will bring the throne here before you have time to close your eyes, will lose in this world and in the hereafter and verily Allah is rich, most glorious. Towards the arrival of Queen Balkis, Prophet Suleiman ordered his people to change slightly the shape and color of the queen's throne that was already in front of him then after the queen arrived with her entourage, Prophet Suleiman asked while referring to his throne, Is this your throne like? Balkis replied, As if this is my own throne, while wondering in his heart, how is it possible that his throne was here when he was sure that the throne was in the palace when he left Saba? While Balgis was in a state of turmoil, Dismayed to see that his royal throne had moved to Solomon's palace, he was brought into a room purposely built for his reception. The floor and walls are made of white glass. Balkis immediately unveiled his clothes over his calves while in the room, thinking that he was above a pool of water that could wet his body and clothes. Prophet Suleiman said to him, You don't have to take off your clothes. You are not above a pool of water. What you see are the white glass that forms the floor and walls of this room. Oh, my lord, Balkis said, realizing his weakness towards God's greatness and power demonstrated by Prophet Suleiman, I have long strayed away from you, neglected your favors and gifts, harmed and wronged myself so that I fell from your light and grace. Forgive me. I surrender to your Prophet Suleiman with sincerity and full faith. Have mercy on me. O oh, most gracious and most merciful God. Such is the story of Prophet Suleiman and Balkis Queen of Saba. And according to some commentators and historians of the prophets, that Prophet Suleiman eventually married Balkis and from this marriage a son was born. According to the recognition of the Maharaja of Ethiopia Abyssinia, they are descendants of Prophet Suleiman from the son of his marriage to Balkis. Wallahu Alam Bishawab. The death of Prophet Suleiman the Quran narrates that there were no signs indicating Solomon's death except for the termites that ate his stick which he leaned on when God took his spirit. The jinn who were working on the building on his orders did not know that Prophet Suleiman had died except after they saw Prophet Suleiman fell on the floor, due to the fall of his stick which was eaten by termites. If the jinn had known beforehand, surely they would not have continued with what they considered a humiliating ordeal. There are various stories that people relate to the verse that tells about the death of Prophet Suleiman,
But because these stories are not supported by an absolute, valid hadith, we should stick with what is narrated in the Al-Quran and then it is Allah who knows better and to him we surrender. Niner. The story of Prophet Sulaiman can be read in the Al-Quran Surah and Namal verses 15 to 44.